So, suppose I take constant flux conditions, constant flux conditions. So, the local flux Q s is H into T s minus T m and that is constant right. So, which means that d t s by d x should be equal to d t m by d x right because it is constant. So, all I have done is I have taken the first derivative with respect to x position. So, the gradients of these two have to be equal. So, now if I plug in that condition there ok. So, we will see that 0 equal to minus d t by d x plus t s minus t divided by t s minus t m into d t m by d x ok plus. So, that will be so t m minus t divided by t minus t m divided by t s minus t m into d t s by d x ok. So, now I can replace d t s by d x with the gradient of the average temperature. So, that will be d t m by d x ok. So, now if I join these two together, so you will find that d t by d x that is equal to d x and that is also equal to d t s by d x. So, all I have done is I have just clapped these two. So, the local temperature term will cancel out. So, what you will have is T s minus T m and so you divide by T s minus T m that goes away. So, what you have is that the local temperature gradient in the x position should be equal to the local temperature gradient of the mixing cup average and that should also be equal to the temperature gradient of the surface. So, that is an important insight. So, we have got two important things. One is that the heat transport coefficient remains constant in the fully developed regime and not just that the gradients are actually equal. Again this is in the fully developed regime. So, the gradients are equal. So, this is an important in piece of insight from experimental point of view ok. So, if I know how to measure the local temperature of the surface, I am done. I can find the uh, temperature gradient of the fluid inside the tube. So, typically the entry region is very small. So, by and large is going to be a fully developed regime in the tube and so I should be able to estimate the temperature gradient of the fluid inside the tube just by looking at the surface temperature. So, that is an excellent ex method to measure experimentally. So, such kind of an insight is very difficult to get from experiments by looking at simple analysis of of the nature of the solution we are able to estimate an important property of the system that the temperature local temperature gradient in the x direction is same as the temperature gradient of the surface ok. All right. So, one could do the same exercise for constant temperature also. So, one could do the same exercise exercise for constant temperature. So, you will see that d t by d x that will be t s minus t m for t s minus t divided by t s minus t m and d t m by d x. So, this is for the constant temperature case where d t s by d x is 0. So, if it is constant temperature then the temperature gradient in the wall is 0 and so we will see that d t by d x is t s minus t by t s minus t m into d t m by d x. Now, is this a function of radial position? Of course, yes. Is this a function of axial position? Yes or no? Is it or no? It is not, this is dimensionless temperature. This is dimensionless temperature. DTM by, yeah, ok. So, ok, good. So, this actually can be a function of axial position because although you have a dimensionless temperature here, the gradient DTM by DX, we do not know anything about DTM by DX. 
So, dtm by dx can in principle be function of x. So, now the real exercise once we know this the real exercise is to find out what is the what is the cup mixing temperature. So, can we find the cup mixing temperature? So, if we find the cup mixing temperature profile with respect to x direction then we are done. We get a lot more piece of information without solving all the gory equations. Okay. So, what we are going to do next exercise is to find out what is the method to estimate the cup mixing temperature. So, what we are going to write is we are going to write a balance energy balance for estimating cup mixing temperature T m ok. So, this is very similar to the lumping I talked about during conduction. So, if you have a full temperature profile you can actually integrate in the radial direction and you would actually get a same energy balance and it is a good exercise to try it out ok. So, suppose I take a tube ok this is dx and if the mixing cup temperature at that location is T m and this is T m x plus dx this is x ok. And if the mass flow rate is m dot and if the amount of heat that is lost is dq convection ok. So, that is the total amount of heat that is lost from the surface. So, what is the heat balance? Whatever heat that is coming into this shell at this location should be equal to what leaves plus whatever is leaving from the other end of the shell right. So, that should be dq convection ok plus what is the amount of energy that is actually leaving this place this location yeah m dot ok. So, m dot C p into T m right at x plus d x minus m dot C p T m at x equal to 0 right. So, that is the total amount of heat that is actually entering this and leaving this place ok. So, from here is the sign right. ok. What about the what about the yeah there will be conduction this is the overall balance right. So, conduction is accounted here this is no 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 be very careful this is the mixing cup temperature right. Now, when you want to write conduction you have to write the local temperature. So, here we have lumped everything it does it does it takes place in the z direction right, but but whatever heat comes in and leaves everything is accounted in the total amount of accumulation right. this is the this is the amount of heat that is carried net amount of heat carried by the fluid. Now, this can be split into two parts what is the diffuser yeah what is the conduction term and what is the convection term it could be split into two parts but this is just a generic balance ok. So, from here so what is dq convection? So, if the flux of heat transport is q double dash ok we do not know whether it is constant flux or not let us say in general the flux is q s. So, it could be a position of x ok multiplied by the perimeter right into d x. So, that is the convection right. So, therefore, if you plug this in you will see that q s double prime
you are right ok. So, I can rewrite this as m dot C p into d t m by d x that should be equal to minus q s into p ok. So, how do I define q s? What is q s? If it is a constant flux then this is constant for first case. If it is a constant flux then this is constant. If it is constant temperature Q s is given by some heat transport coefficient multiplied by T s minus T m. Tm, right. So, I can plug that in. So, that will be m dot C p into d t m by d x that is equal to h into T s minus T m into p. Yeah, you need a temperature gradient, right, for flux. What is the Newton's law of cooling? The flux will be equal to heat transport coefficient multiplied by the temperature of the surface minus whatever is the reference temperature. So, the reference temperature for our problem is the cup mixing temperature right. So, that is the reference temperature yeah it is a cross sectional average T m is the cross sectional average. Correct. So, that is a weighted cross sectional average it is still a cross sectional average you have to take the velocity into account because the u can be different at different locations right. So, you have to take if you want yeah at, at, at a given cross section you have a velocity profile it is not a flat velocity profile you have a parabolic velocity profile. So, therefore, you have to take into account the effect of the velocity on the amount of energy that is carried and that is why T m will account for the uh, local velocity and also the local temperature in the fluid at any cross section. So, it is a cross sectional average weighted with the velocity term weighted with the profile of the velocity. So, so suppose I find for the constant flux case constant flux case. So, d t m by d x will be equal to minus q s prime to p by m dot C p ok. So, I know this I if it is a constant flux the flux is a measurable quantity. So, I know what q s is I know what p is I know what m dot and C p is. So, I should be able to find the temperature profile right. So, I can find out what c obviously it is linear you can see that ok. Now, if it is a constant temperature the constant temperature case I could still solve this equation. So, it will be m dot C p into d t m by d x equal to heat transport coefficient into T s minus T m ok. So, now here the te mixing cup temperature is now going to be a function of the heat transport coefficient what will be the temp mixing cup temperature profile it will be exponential function right minus sign into p that should be a p right. So, that will be a function of the heat transport coefficient and so you can clearly see that when you have constant flux the temperature profile is going to vary linearly in the fully developed regime while in the case of constant temperature it is going to be an exponential profile. So, we one can actually draw the temperature profile ok for a constant flux case. If I draw the temperature profile for constant flux ok. So, you will have so remember we said that for constant flux case d t m by d x is also equal to d t s by d x that is also equal to d t by d x in the fully developed regime right. So, remember the derivatives we took a short while ago. So, there we clearly showed that for a constant flux case 
the gradient of the mixing cup temperature is equal to the gradient of the surface temperature and the local temperature in the fully developed regime. So, if this is the temperature profile of the mixing cup temperature and this will be the temperature profile of the this will be the surface temperature ok. So, that will be the surface temperature. So, the surface temperature gradient this is the fully developed regime. So, the surface temperature gradient and the mixing cup temperature gradient are same in the fully developed regime while they are not same in the entry region ok. So, in fact, this is the reason why the heat transport coefficient is actually significantly higher in the entry region. So, remember we drew this plot of heat transport coefficient versus x where you have a constant heat transport coefficient in the fully developed regime and that is because the gradients are equal and also the mixing cup temperature is linear. So, therefore, the gradient is constant when you have a constant flux condition and therefore, the heat transport coefficient has to remain constant for a given set of properties like conductivity of the fluid while in the entry region the gradient is very small and therefore, the heat transport coefficient has to be very large. No, you can always have the reverse if you have. So, we, we started the discussion by assuming that there is heat transport from the outside to the inside of the fluid you can always do the reverse it does not matter the profiles will be different. Yeah, sure because this this balance we wrote this is for the whole tube going from 0 to L. This is independent of whether you have a a fully developed regime or an entry region. This balance is valid everywhere in the tube. So, it is linear everywhere, but the surface temperature is not linear everywhere. Why does the? Right, because the fluid is now, so the mixing cup temperature is now catching up with the temperature of the uh, wall, right. So, wall temperature is higher, it is going to catch up with the, right. No, but this is constant flux. Keep in mind that this is constant flux, not constant temperature, right. So, you are only removing constant amount of heat. So, the temperature of the wall is the is, is the one which is going to vary with the actual position, right. You are supplying or leaving, whatever, it does not matter. Whether T s is higher than T m or T m is higher than T s, you will have exactly a similar behavior, except that the profiles are going to be slightly. So, T m is going to be higher than T s if you are actually removing heat from the fluid. If you are actually supplying heat then this profile is going to be above the T m that is all that is the only difference. Any questions so far? So, remember that we still have not solved the full profile ok. So, we without solving the full profile of the temperature we are able to get lot of insights into what is the nature of the heat transport coefficient what is the nature of some of the observable quantities like the surface temperature and in fact, we are able to predict some of the properties of the actual temperature profile without even solving the equations. We will come to solving the equations in the next lecture.